welcome back and it's now time to go in depth. Trinidad and Tobago has been experiencing a shortage of medical supplies. The very critical issue is of concern to citizens. Based on local media reports, public health facilities are running out of drugs such as antibiotics to treat patients and a number of surgeries had reportedly been reduced due to the limited supply of drugs. It was also revealed that the National Insurance Property Development Limited Company, NIPDEC, responsible for purchasing medical supplies, was out of funds. Now, we must add that on Thursday, Finance Minister Com Imbert announced that approximately 36.7 million U.S. dollars will be made available to address the pressing issue. To help us understand what's happening in Trinidad and Tobago, we are joined by former health minister, now the opposition spokesman on health, Dr. Fouad Khan. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Khan. All right, good night. Good night to everyone. Okay, help us to understand what led to the shortage of supplies in the first place. First, let me say that the, the procurement and distribution of pharmaceuticals in the public health sector is run by NIPDEC, and it has had its ups and downs over the last, I mean, uh, uh, last couple of years. Now, the shortages that we are seeing it has resulted from, uh, from uh, purchasing pharmaceuticals uh -huh. in a kind of a blunderbuss manner. And as a result of that, there's no definite tracking or distribution chain that one could put their finger on and say, this is how it runs and this is what is going to occur. It has always been an ad hoc system. Now, some, in, some, in some health facilities, you will find there's a surplus, surplus of drugs. In some health facilities, that same pharmaceutical will be in short supply. But because the tracking mechanism is not great, you will, find, you will not be able to determine that, that, that problem. So you'll find a lot of the shortages that are taking place, there will be surpluses in another health facility. So the tracking mechanism by NIPDEC and C40 and the whole system was going to be revamped when I was in, I was in office. And that, that's what's happening right now. They have reverted to the old system of NIPDEC purchasing, but NIPDEC is going to purchase the same manner which they always purchased. So they'll have these sinusoidal ups and downs as a result of that level, that type of mechanism. It's supply chain um, economics is, is, is what is needed, supply chain action. And that, that's basically the problem. Oh, so, so probably the, the challenge could also be internal in terms of streamlining. But how severe is the shortage and what sort of impact has it had on the public? You have, no, Trinidad and Tobago has a national formulary of almost a thousand or more pharmaceuticals. And we have been in the process of trying to determine the, a short, to determine which um, pharmaceutical no longer is needed on the formulary. But the purchasing powers purchase all that, that on the formulary. So if you have 250 drugs, pharmaceuticals that are necessary, you will be buying a, a, a thousand drugs and 750 of them will not be utilized in the sector but if they will be purchased because that's what's been happening as a result of the formulary. The formulary in Trinidad and Tobago is being revamped. We started the process with the people from Argentina when I was minister. Because of that same problem, there were too many pharmaceuticals being distributed and duplicated throughout the system. So you will get shortages of one because there will be a lot of other pharmaceuticals that you could use that, that is present for the same ailment. So that is one problem that's occurring. So how do we address this issue? Because I'm listening to you, Dr. Khan, I hear that there's a shortage, but there could be weaknesses in the system. Right. And that is what is, I think the problem lies. The system needs to be changed. I advocated a public-private type of system, and what we, is that the Ministry of Health will be the one to actually own the system, but we will get a private supplier, a private system, involved in the supply chain distribution, the tracking of the pharmaceuticals, and exactly have, a, as I say, a computer system where one will know what goes out, where it goes, what is, what is from where it goes, such as C4, which is our main area, and determine the whole pattern of movement of pharmaceuticals. 
I will tell you something. The junior officers in the regional health authorities are the ones who do the ordering. And as a result of that, you get a haphazard type of ordering. And sometimes when the goods arrive, they are put in certain places that nobody could access them. And sometimes nobody knows they are there. We have a very, very large volume of pharmaceuticals that are sent back and are expired, waiting on the Board of Service to, to dispose. And as a result of that, in, in, in the whole portfolio of the system, in the area called C40, sometimes there are pharmaceuticals there that are present, but they are short in the, um, in the public health facilities because nobody knows exactly what is tracked there as well as any public health facilities. So as from what, you're, what, what I'm trying to say, the system needs to be changed to be for more efficient, that, that, and then the shortages will decrease. Okay, so basically an overall of the, the system. No, yeah, that is what's, what's, what's needed. Okay. And tracking, proper tracking. Proper tracking. I recall that story carried by CMC3 where there were reports of fraudulent drugs, pharmacists selling fraudulent drugs. Say it again? There was a story carried by CMC3 that there were drugs on the market that were fraud. Well, not really fraudulent drugs. They were drugs that were what we call the suitcase drugs. Suitcase drugs are drugs that are not that where the, the distributor, uh, who, uh, there are people who are just bringing these drugs and they're not, they don't pass through the food and drugs registration system, but they are already in the system uh, registered by bona fide distributors. So that, that's, not, that, that's how they use the word fraudulent in a, in, in a broad sense. It's really people bringing in pharmaceuticals that, are not, that don't belong to the distributor system where the, those distributors register the drugs. It's sort of bypassing the system. There's a lot of that going on in Trinidad and Tobago as a result of it. There's another factor too in the in the sometimes shortages of pharmaceuticals are created by people in the system. So they can now say to the powers that be, we need emergency supply of pharmaceuticals and then that goes out without tender and to people who they, they know quite well. So that's another problem that's occurring. It's always a created shortage. So they could then utilize that created shortage to do emergency purchases. Now, the health minister is, is responsible for managing the health sector. Should Health Minister Terence Delsing be held accountable for this unfortunate incident? An unfortunate incident in the case where there are so many loopholes in the sector that are not being plugged. Minister Dial saying the box stops at the minister. It stopped at me, and I, I was I was on the firing line, and he will be on the firing line also. The minister has to come up with policies and systems in place, together with the cryptocrats, to deal with the problem. We started the process of dealing with the problem, and I've advanced that to the technocrats and indicated to them they have to continue with it. So unfortunately, I don't think that has been put on the front burner. It may be, it may have now because we have been articulating it throughout the day and the last couple of weeks. So maybe they may look at the um, the process that was taking place before. So on Thursday, as we announced earlier, the finance minister has announced that some monies will be given to NIPDEC to ensure that they're able to purchase supplies. Now, how was that too late? Was that announcement too late? Well, that. The suppliers have not been paid. Apparently, they owe, the, 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 owes the suppliers quite a lot of money. Now, the Ministry of Health are the ones who determine the invoices, order, this, order the invoices and say, okay, then, this is bona fide and pay. So that money will pass through the Ministry of Health and then be sent in based on the, on, the, on the invoicing of those pharmaceuticals. The distributors will then get the pharmaceutical and uh, the money and they will start to supply the pharmaceuticals that they were supplying all along. So that will alleviate the shortage. What I did, I also, when I was minister, I um, passed an amendment to the RHA Act where the RHAs could purchase um, pharmaceuticals that are short and necessary from their budget and then tap into the ministry's budget afterwards. So, in other words, that has since, I think, been stopped so far. As a result of that, the, that's at the local level where the, the facilities are. 
And I think that that is a decentralized effort that will assist in um, decreasing the, the shortages that are, are present. Well, Dr. Khan, you are the opposition spokesperson on health, so without a doubt you may have opposing arguments. But would it be fair to say the Keith Rowley administration hasn't put or placed health on the front burner? I don't. I, I can't. I. I don't know answer that. I don't know what the Pete Rowley has done. He has um, put certain things on the front burner. I know we did. We put health, education, and security in the front burner. That was the Kamala Prasad Bhattacharjee's um, government. And I will not have opposing views. I may have opposing views on the methods that they do, because we. I changed the system together with the cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago, and under the advice of the Prime Minister. Now, there's a problem that we have, and the problem will not be solved by doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So, um, you will get the same result. So doing the same thing that you did for 20 years is not going to work, and that is what's happening right now. We changed the system. Of course, there were hiccups. They had some hiccups, but the system was working. The population is saying that there was, there was no great amount of shortages during the last couple, couple of years. There were shortages were not as bad as it is now. So you can't be doing the same thing, as I said, over and over and expect it to work. You have to change it. Just before you go, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. The UNC has the case, five marginal seats. That's the petition they're making in the courts. Are you optimistic that the, the verdict will be positive for the UNC? Well, I have to be optimistic because at the end of the day, the Prime Minister is, and together the former Attorney General, they are the ones spearheading the, the legal arguments. And if it is that we are successful, and August the 19th, I think, is the day that it will be determined, well, then we will see what happens after that. Maybe we may have to go back to the polls. Okay. Thanks so much, Dr. Khan, for joining me.